Hi there and welcome to this video series where I'll be searching for the best trading strategy for cryptocurrency trading. In each video I am going to test a strategy that is explained in a YouTube video, trading site or is publicly available for use. Each strategy will be tested on its probability to make money by backtesting on multiple digital asset pairs over their largest possible backtesting period. The result of this test is then compared with the results of earlier tested strategies. If you like this video and you want to see more of them, then please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to get notified on my newest content, then click on the bell icon. It will also help the YouTube algorithm. Please remember that this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Everything you see here is hypothetical and based on historic data, so there is no guarantee the investigated strategy will work in the future. I'm not a professional, so always do your own research or consult a professional before using any information in real trading. And in this video I'm going to test one of my personal older strategies which I have abandoned a long time ago. But sometimes I still refer to it because at that time it was one of my more profitable strategies. This strategy makes use of the three following indicators, which are the double EMA, two simple moving averages and the RSI indicator together with an RSI moving average. It is a swing trading strategy with use of the default frag trade, ROI and stop loss functions. The way this strategy works is as follows. The first moving average is a longer term trend indicator. The default value I am using here is the 55 day moving average. If the price is above this moving average, there is a medium term trend and the strategy has its first signal to make a possible trade. Then there is a combination of the double exponential moving average and another shorter term moving average. The double EMA has a time period of 9 and the short SMA has a period of 21. When the DMA9 is above the 28 SMA, then a second trigger is formed which indicates that there is a short term price upswing. And when the RSI 14 in this case is above the RSI 21 period moving average, then the final trigger for a market entry is given and a trade should be made. The exit signal is pretty simple and it's indicated by the DEMA getting below the SMA. So there are no trades when the DEMA is below the SMA. Now, how do you code this in a strategy file for a bot like frag trade, you might wonder. Well, in this case I used a combination of NumPy and Python to decide when the frag trade bot should get a signal to enter the market. Now this is no perfect code and a more experienced programmer might have a better solution for what I present. But I consider this an example of an alternative on how you can also program to create signals with the help of NumPy. So here it goes, let's see the code. And I directly dive right down to the ROI and stop loss settings. The settings you see here I manually discovered by trial and error. At that time I had no clue on what hyperparameter optimization was and was just starting to program. So what I did back then was enter some values and backtest manually. Then change some of these values and backtest it again to see if they gave better results or not. And by doing a whole bunch of manual backtests and manually changing these values, I got so tired that I just entered the values that gave me the best results at that time. And just used this in the strategy from now on. So you see, I also came a long way before I got the knowledge to make use of Hyperopt. So if you have no experience with Hyperopt, then I recommend you to watch my extensive video on hyperparameter optimization for frag trade. Now in this plot config section I have done the following. First of all plot the DEMA in red and SMA in blue on the main plot chart. Then create a subplot below the main plot and show the RSI in blue and RSI moving average in red there. And for more information on how to plot these charts I also have made a video as well on that subject. Then we have the indicator section. In this part are the indicators themselves configured. You can see here that I used two SMAs with the 55 and 21 period. One DEMA with a time period of 9, the RSI with a value of 14 and its moving average. The moving average I created by making a new column in the data frame and taking the rolling 21 mean. So here at every new candle a new mean is calculated over the last 21 data frame rows. 
Then over here I am using NumPy to create another bunch of new columns, but these will contain true or false statements. So here you can see a comparison where the position of the DMA is checked against the SMA. If it is above the SMA, then a 1 will be entered in the data frame cell. If not, a 0 will be entered. And the same goes for the RSI POS field. If the RSI is above its moving average, then a 1 will be entered, and if not, a 0. Then at the end, these two fields will be added and entered into the POS count field. So if one of the MA POS or RSI POS will be 1, then a 1 will be entered here, and if both are positive, then a 2 will be registered. Then finally, the data frame will be returned and we can begin by determining the buy and sell signals. In the buy trend function, the enter signal will be given when the following conditions are met. The close price of the pair should be above its 55 simple moving average over here. And the position counter, which I explained a minute ago, should be equal to 2. So again, the moving average position field and the RSI position field should both be 1 in this case to create the signal. Then there is the sell signal. This signal is very simple and states that if the DEMA is below the SMA, then the bot should trigger an exit signal and the position should be closed. So I hope that this is clear for you and let's wrap this section of the video up. Let's get back to business and see if this strategy can still make profit over the determined backtesting period. It's interesting to see that my new calculation to determine the best strategy here has resulted in a draw between the 1 day and 4 hour time frame, although both have different scores at different measuring points. By taking a closer look at these two results I can see that there is a trade off between good gains on the 4 hour time frame, but less good win rate and higher risk to lose your gains. And on the 1 day time frame there is a lower profit but a higher probability to keep your gains and have more winning trades, although this will not give you the much short huge gains of course. Nonetheless we have a battle on our hands to see which time frame comes out on top after I have optimized the parameters for both time frames. And speaking of hyperparameter optimization. Let's quickly take a closer look at the code of the adjusted strategy file that enables me to do hyperparameter optimization. The first part of the code where the ROI, stop loss, time frame and plot config are configured are roughly the same. But if you remembered the code from the original strategy, then you already can spot a small difference in the plotting section. There you will see two buy moving averages and two sell moving averages, and I will explain you why you see this in a minute. The next thing you see in this code are the hyperopt spaces that are configured. These spaces determine the boundaries where the optimal parameter for the indicators should be looked for. So in the long term SMA space, you see here that the optimal parameter will be sought between the 40 SMA and the 101 SMA. The default 55 is used when you backtest or trade with this strategy without any optimization. Finally, you will see the space this moving average is optimized for. Buy means that this indicator will be used as a buy signal. And this is where I deviate a little bit from the original backtested strategy. I configured a second set of moving averages consisting of the DMA and SMA. The second set will be used to find the optimal sell signal, which as you can remember is a cross down of the DMA below the SMA. This way I want to try to improve the original strategy because the moving averages parameters that will cause a buy signal do not necessarily have to be the best parameters to also provide a sell signal. So in a way I'm trying to improve the strategy from a single DEMA SMA crossover into a double DEMA SMA crossover, one for the entry and one for exit signals. The next part consists of the definition of indicators. Here you see the following for loops that loops every time the strategy will run against the dataset, and every run the parameter value for the indicator will be different. This different indicator value comes from the space that is defined here, 
and is randomly selected because of the Bayesian search algorithm that is used for frag trade. So, what happens is that for each pass of the Hyprod run, the value for this indicator is selected from the indicator space range and will then be used to detect an entry signal. This happens for each configured indicator here except the RSI and RSI SMA value. Of course, I also could have do the same with these RSI values, but then the whole hyperopt calculation will take a lot of resources. And since it already tries to determine 5 other optimized parameters, I figured that this would only lead to too much curve fitting to historic data, which wouldn't be optimal for future trades. Here a little bit further down, you see the code that is commented out. This was the original code that uses NumPy to determine the buy positions for the DEMA-SMA combination and the RSI and RSI moving average. I commented this out because Hyperopt expects these comparisons in the buy trend and sell trend functions. So I added the comparisons of the DEMA to the SMA and RSI to the RSI moving average in the buy trend function. But technically the comparison is similar to the old strategy file, just in a different way. So here you see in the buy trend function the first comparison of the close price against the long trend symbol moving average value that is determined by the Hyperopt engine and which lies in the long term SMA space defined in the beginning. The same goes for the determined DEMA moving average that comes from the Hyperopt space and it is compared to see if it's bigger than the similar found by SMA space value. And the RSI is just simply compared to the RSI SMA value over here. The cell trend exit signals over here makes use of the two separate configured DEMA and SMA trend lines which have their own search space. So, this way the cell trend exit signals is not dependent anymore on the buying moving average but makes use of two separate pairs of moving averages which have their own space to make use of. And this actually finishes the high prop code for this strategy. So now let's run an optimization session of this code on the 1 day and 4 hour time frame. And let's see on which time frame the better parameters for better strategy results can be found. After running two optimization sessions, one on the 1 day time frame and one on the 4 hour time frame, I have the following results. The 4 hour time frame clearly has more profits in store for us with the found best parameters. The 101 SMA for determining the mid term uptrend and buy signals when the DEMA 14 is above the 32 SMA. And this still with the default RSI 14 and an RSI SMA 21. Then the sell signal comes when the DEMA 11 gets below the SMA 14. So here we clearly can see the sell signals are pretty quick in comparison with the buy signals, which have longer term moving averages. Let's compare these new strategy settings with the original parameter settings on the Bitcoin price chart and look at the differences. Here we see the plot of the initial DEMA SMA crossover strategy and you can definitely see a lot of trades happening on the 4 hour time frame. The red looks a little bit dominant but we know that the strategy did make some profit when looking at the backtest results. Now if you look closely to a detail of the chart then you can clearly see when the strategy takes profit because of an ROI setting or because the sell trend gives a signal. You can see over here and here that the ROI apparently has a sell signal because the DEMA is not below the SMA. But in this example the DEMA is getting under the SMA, so again a sell signal, but this time with a loss because the trade was entered here. Here is the chart with the hyperopted indicators. At first sight you can almost not tell the difference, except the extra two lines that are added to the legend here. But if we zoom in roughly to the same section as before, we can clearly see differences between the charts. At first glance, because this strategy makes use of two crossover lines for selling that are quicker than the crossover lines for buying, it looks like profits are getting taken quicker when short uptrends are stopping. The longer trend 101 moving average 
may react slower, but it also does not provide false signals. So if we compare these two plots side by side, I see that the old strategy has a lot of cells in this section that are losing. But the newer parameters do not have this, and do not sell with a loss. The second strategy might have more trades and a lower win rate in the backtest results, but the wins look more profitable and the sales lose less money. I think that is why the high profit strategy performs better. Now I'm very curious on how this strategy performs in comparison to the earlier tested ones in the overall league. Now I can imagine that you might wonder how I compare these strategies with each other. Well, to achieve this I have the following sheet. In this overview, I have written down the setup for these tests and also the method to try out to find the best strategy. This is the way I do these back tests to find the strategy that has the highest probability to make profits with the trading bot. You can always use this as an inspiration to develop your own methodology for testing and comparing trading strategies between each other. I always strongly recommend that you do your own research after watching my video, develop your own way of testing and get confidence in your methodology. So with this out of the way, let's see how this double DEMA and SMA strategy performs in comparison with my earlier tests. And the list is getting longer and longer, and this strategy enters the 13th place on the list. Be aware that I have developed a new approach to compare these strategies between each other, so it might look a little bit different when comparing this list with an earlier video. You can see the reason for this in the video link that pops up in the upper right corner. The profits of this strategy are quite nice if you compare this with the higher scoring strategies. What makes this one enter at the 13th place is mainly because of its drawdown, its lower win rate and somewhat higher risk of ruin. But if you want to take some higher risks in comparison with the pairs that this strategy might fit better, then this could be quite an interesting and above all simple to follow strategy to examine further. Be also aware that the results on the plot look like they are a little bit curve fitted too much. By doing your own research, you might find better parameters that work also in future market and also have less risk. And so this concludes our findings of this strategy. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. And please click on the like button if you like this content and want to see more of this in the future. Also, please click the bell icon if you want to get notified on my newest videos. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already so. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!